buscaban un socialismo con rostro humano y en cambio encontraron una de las represiones más brutales del siglo XX. La Unión Soviética les acusó de querer organizar una contrarrevolución y junto con sus aliados del Pacto de Varsovia, a excepción de Rumania, invadieron la ciudad de Praga. Más de 600.000 soldados ocuparon la madrugada del 21 de agosto la ciudad de Praga, en lo que es considerado la segunda operación militar soviética más importante después de la Segunda Guerra Mundial. Everybody was shocked because we didn't have any contra-revolution, what they claim. And in the morning, when uh, we were day, at daytime, many soldiers, tanks, with sitting on the trucks, army trucks, you know, pointing the guns around us at that time. Uh, then was panic, nobody knew what's going on. The, we didn't have enough bread, people were panicking. Nobody wants to fight it, we just want Little, have a little bit freedom, like go a little bit travel, go for a holiday and just breathe, you know, and unfortunately it wasn't meant to be. A diferencia de los movimientos estudiantiles de París, Roma y otras ciudades europeas, la Primavera de Praga quería regresar a la democracia que ya gozaban entre la Primera y la Segunda Guerra Mundial. It was not only uh, revendications of uh, uh, change of uh, uh, traditional societies, but it was on the contrary. We wanted to come back to democracy. We lost uh, after this communist coup in 1948. So that was the main difference. That was the source of misunderstandings because uh, uh, while uh, German students or French students, Maoists were willing to destroy uh, western type democracies we were willing exactly the opposite han pasado 40 años desde la primavera de praga y hoy el museo nacional cuya fachada se vio afectada terriblemente por aquellos ataques ha organizado la exposición y llegaron los tanques donde además de video y fotografías del movimiento podemos encontrar objetos personales de jean palash el joven que se prendió fuego frente a los militares y se convirtió en un símbolo de la resistencia cartas personales del líder político Alexander Dubček e incluso las medallas que ganaron los deportistas checoslovacos en las Olimpiadas de México 68. Took another 30 years or how long before finally we got free. It was very bad time, very depressing because we want to live in peace. They want and I'm very happy that finally Everything changed. Unfortunately, for somebody like my generation or even older people, it was too late. Praga es hoy una ciudad libre, cosmopolita. Ha caído el telón de acero. Checoslovaquia se ha separado y la República Checa goza ya de los privilegios que implica entrar en la Comunidad Económica Europea. En sus jóvenes generaciones también se refleja este cambio. It was a lot of energy and emotions. It was a very emotional thing. And that was common. We were as genuine and we really meant it. And we were dedicated to reach some progress in spite of the fact that the goals were different. And that is probably what today's generation lacks. The common feeling and the idea, the ideal, which would connect uh, them together. And I'm, I'm not speaking about movements, but they, li they live simply in a lu luxurious situation. They enjoy their luxury lives and uh, they are normal young men. They are brilliant. They are intellectually probably more capable than we were. But uh, the general mood of uh, uh, our society has changed. Para Reporte Internacional desde la ciudad de Praga, en la República Checa, Francina Islas, corresponsal de Notimex.